Onigashimasu! Welcome back to the Kochuri Karate Center. Excuse the attire. Today we're going to be doing a video on various types of fitness and how we try and, or how I used to try and coach and teach fitness. So the biggest problem with doing fitness in a small environment like a dojo is mass participation. What tends to happen when you do a lot of fitness drills, it's one person doing the drill and the rest of the class is standing behind a line or somewhere out the way to allow that person to draw. But it can be adapted for being inside the dojo, but then the groups have to work very, very carefully. So we're gonna start off with essentially three um, interval type uh, running drills to build fitness inside the dojo. Our first drill is called the Magic Square. This drill was originally from JP hockey team. The second exercise is what we call the tennis ball run. Finally, uh, something called suicides, again adapted. And then finally, we've got something called our black belt pre-fitness test, which is a timed exercise, which is a full body workout, and it is a pyramid. Um, pyramids generally talk about either increasing intensity or increased um, duration or repetitions as you go up the pyramid most of the time the pyramid is upside down it's basically standing on its head okay so this is our breakdown for the magic square and what you're going to do is you're going to subdivide your training area into four quadrants um, and you could have this as four quadrants or eight quadrants depending on how big the area is that you have at your disposal and what type of sport you're coaching um, but in terms of the dojo, I normally work on one full-size tatami, eight by eight. So each one of these will be a four by four quadrant, and there are multiple runs. So I think let's turn the cameras around and find the best way to show you what it looks like in the dojo right now. Moments later. I mean, I can help you with some of the draws. I'm not as fast as Brian, but... One of my top liver. <clears throat> Brian will let me win. <laughs> <laughs> Takes pity on six sensei. Okay, so all ready. So we're gonna go through it slowly. So it's a slow side shuffle, forward, side shuffle, backwards. Right? That is slow, then you're gonna build one leg fast. So you might have fast, slow, slow, slow. And you have fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, fast. Fast, slow, fast, fast, and slow. And we increase the size. You get the idea that you're increasing the intensity rather rapidly. What I'm going to do now is just run through one small square, the double square, the triple, then the full square without doing five runs of every single run because that's going to leave me exhausted and we're just going to be wasting educational time. So the pattern is
One direction, one way. That was a lot easier when I was younger. <laughs> All right, so that's the basic idea of the magic square. <sighs> Got to get my breath. The idea being, as you run it, or jog it, you're gradually increasing the intensity. You're doing a lot of agility. You're working inner and outer muscles a little bit with the side shuffle you're working both the quads and the hamstrings and the glutes for running forward and backwards uh, spatial awareness something that is not covered generally but is critical for sport karate is kind of how close can you get to the cones and how fast can you do it without stumbling and falling and becoming accustomed to the eight by eight meter track that is the competitive arena so in terms of learning to compete in an eight by eight ring knowing the boundary the tram lines developing speed along breaking angles etc knowing your place in the on the 64 square meters that make up a tatami um, is critical because it helps you develop these ideas okay i just thought of another exercise it uses the same nine cone pattern all right and is often i would use this as a cardio and load carrying exercise and i would put kettlebells around the outside and you literally pick up a kettlebell take it around and then you move on so this might be called the clock all right and the clock looks something like this so this is a variation it's not on the list it's a yahoo surprise hold on give the microphone here okay so we go up and around and then we move clockwise, way to clockwise. We go in, out, and around. In, out, and around. You'll notice that you're a figure of eight as I go from the outside to the inside. Go this way, then that way. And then on. This one's cool if you have eight people. They all can run at the same time. Gets chaotic in the center. You either run fast or you run slow. Okay, so now I'm really huffing and puffing. The joy of doing the kettlebell run on the clock or moving around clockwise or anti-clockwise you can do fox and hare and that is where you pace or force the pace by putting a chaser on the person running in front the person in front is obviously the hare the person behind is the fox there's a penalty however many times I get you on your run uh, versus however many times you get me on my run the difference uh, the person with the most does uh, extra squats or burpees or whatever is agreed upon that's uh, one way to encourage team cohesiveness and competitiveness where you can slowly work on building it as a uh, basic fitness as warm-ups etc okay give us a few minutes while i kind of create the next set of drills suicides are, are really nice in terms of again class size you can split the dojo up you can do up in my dojo which is 120 square meters 
We could probably do about 22 to 24 people doing this drill. And what I would do is I would do two shifts. So I'd have half the dojo on this side, the other half on that side. I'd have cones or markers, and I don't have to do a cone for every single person. It's just a general idea. Every two meters, you're going to change. And now you're going to get that interval escalation, that pyramid. We're going two meters, then four meters, then six meters, then eight meters. If the dojo equipment is out, then we'll push it up to 10 meters. We'll go to one meter on the blue on this side and one meter on the blue on that side, and then we'll push it a little bit further. So it just depends on what you require, what level of fitness, etc. So suicides are nasty because they really do force the stamina and when you start doing a lot of them it becomes really really difficult um, to just keep going at the same intensity so it's simple we're just going to go forward two meters back two meters forward four meters and then back four meters six and back and then the full length of the red eight meters and back and that's one imagine doing it ten times you're doing quite a lot of accumulative meterage in running and shifting forward and backwards so that covers those I'm now going to move on to the tennis ball run I'm going to clear out a lot of stuff and I'll explain the tennis ball run next all right so this is the tennis ball run and this run is naturally going to be one person at the time and you could probably have about a two tennis ball or three tennis ball spacing which means when a runner gets to the third tennis ball the next runner can start you can also build fox and hare into this exercise a little bit more complicated um, i found that it worked with the university karate team quite well we use this quite often as our team camaraderie, team building kind of activities, as well as our general fitness when we used to have camps leading up to intervarsity. The idea behind the exercise is that one person will collect a tennis ball and return it to the far side of the dojo or court, put the tennis ball down, then proceed to the next tennis ball and try and shift all the tennis balls to the side. The next person who starts their job is to return the tennis balls. So they will take a tennis ball and place it there and then run back and fetch a tennis ball. The biggest mistake or the biggest problem happens when the runners run one block over in favor of getting ahead and then it throws the system out. So everybody needs to be, a little bit of time has to be done training to learn the pattern before they go into like a a fox and hare kind of game where it gets kind of chaotic and accidents happen and people take the wrong cone to the wrong place. So I'm going to run through this. I'm going to give Zoe the mic. This can also be a timed event. It's forward. The ball must go on the cone. You should do left and right hands. It's a lot right up even higher. So imagine doing that about five times. It really gets you amped. Okay, give us a few minutes while we pack up and I'll move on to the last exercise. Our pre-test in our dojo 
to get, and this is simply called the black belt fitness test, is pretty much a whole body workout. A couple of weeks ago in the live stream, somebody asked me if I could do some push-ups. I wanted to see me do push-ups, obviously think, uh, A, I'm, <laughs> I'm fit, which I, by self-admission, I'm not as fit as I once was. Um, and B, I don't do kind of PT in that. I hate push-ups, I'll be honest, and I hate doing sit-ups. But this is one way to build volume and overall endurance. So we start with one repetition. And the full black belt test is up to 15 repetitions of each of the exercises. And it's cumulative. By the time you finish from 1 to 10, you will have done 55 repetitions of any exercise. By the time you get to 15, you have done 120 push-ups, 120 sit-ups, 120 squats. If you want to throw burpees into the mix, go for it. We generally don't. And you will have done 120 shuttle runs. Forward one way, backwards the second way. And it's a timed exercise. Adults who are much older, the tolerance and the leeway is that they get more time because this is physically grueling. And for youngsters, obviously, they strive to getting the higher times. Uh, we have some youngsters who perform this exercise over the eight meter, just the red section of our tatami, eight meters um, on the shuttle runs. They complete it in around about 12 minutes, 20, 12 minutes, 25. The twins know who they are. They check out the channel on a regular basis. They are fantastic at it. The exercises are done at a pretty high quality. So um, we often see with the youngsters, the lower belts, poorer quality on the exercise. But as they get ready for black belt grading, the quality of the exercise gets better. I know a lot of people like to do a beep test. Um, a beep test serves a really good set of functions. It's a good way to motivate people, but I'm generally, if you're not running 20 meters and you're not doing it outside where you can all run, and if you're not being hardcore about, if you didn't make the time, what's the point? Beep test, most important thing is to figure out what is your potential VO2 max. That's why the test exists, if you look at it. It's great for endurance and motivation, but I think this one might top it. Uh, what it looks like, I'm gonna do one to five purpose of video, but you ultimately can do 1 to 15. Alright, so here we go, one run. One push up. One sit up. One squat.
Okay. Yay. <sighs> yep, I'm gasping. So that's our first five levels of 15 levels for the black belt fitness test. You just keep adding. It gets boring to watch. That's why I've kept it to five levels. Like I said, the big thing here, if it's standardized on meters, you can then work towards a personal base, a PB on your time. If there are black belts watching each other, they get critical about the quality of the repetitions. When the push-ups become these kind of like little quarter jobs, you'll hear somebody going, no count, doesn't count, nose in the deck, so on and so forth. So these are things to consider when trying to build a fitness program. Inside the dojo, some ideas that we have used successfully over the last 25 years in preparing and training provincial athletes, university athletes, our dojo athletes, when we were a very uh, invested dojo in sport karate. Um, it's still, we use part of it for fitness, boot camps, for gashkus, etc., to help build people's self esteem and morale doing exercises as a group or in teams, especially on camps. Whole team has to do it together. They have to make sure that the weakest team member doesn't fall behind, etc. So, over the years, we've come up with lots of variations. I'm sure some of the variations that I conceived of in the middle of the night that became nightmares for athletes who were training with me are probably being practiced somewhere in South Africa still. So, hope you enjoyed what we did today. That's it. Uh, thank you to Sensor Zoe for filming. Hopefully, we've got some good footage. I'm going to take a bow. Arigato. Gozaimasu.